Hello dear subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is Vibs from Slider here. In this video, we are going to talk about how to play with SQLite database in Android. Now starting with this video, lasting for the next couple of videos, we are going to be playing with SQLite database in every possible way and try to make you masters of what you fear the most in Android. So first, let's talk about what is SQLite. SQL is a language designed for managing data in relational databases. Now you guys have probably seen Microsoft Access or you have seen SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, Sybase and there are many other databases out there but out of those the popular ones probably use this language SQL which is a modified version. Now so far I have not talked about SQL anywhere on my playlist but sometime in the future I'll be talking about SQL too in a lot more detail. So first let's talk about SQLite which is actually a scaled down version of your MySQL, Postgres SQL and other popular systems. Now every app has its own SQLite database. This database is accessible any, by any class in the app but remember the other apps and other classes that belong to the other apps cannot access this database. And this is transactional in nature which means if something goes wrong things are rolled back. If you guys remember the relational database properties which is atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability. SQLite follows those four principles. For guys who are new to this or hearing this word for the first time, please google asset properties and you will find out what I'm talking about. So now you can programmatically create SQLite database. You can also use certain third party tools that let you create the database. Now we'll be talking about these third party tools in the upcoming videos. But the databases are put in data slash data slash package name slash databases folder. For your app inside your file explorer. Now again when we create the database we'll go to the DDMS perspective try to find this folder out and see if the database exists over there and if yes in what format. Now let's talk about the design that we're gonna follow. Now there is a two level design and then there is the three level design. Now if you guys are gonna be making professional apps out there in most of the cases you'll be using a three level design. So let me talk about the two level design first. What you have is a class called SQLite Open Helper. Now this is the class in Android that's responsible for managing the creation of your database and the changes if any to that database. So here if you guys were using some de desktop database tools like Microsoft Access or SQL Server or MySQL you probably had a command prompt or some kind of GUI where you guys would go there create tables, create rows, columns, create the columns and you would fill everything up but here in Android there is no such integrated tool available with the SDK so what you guys have to do is programmatically create databases which means you're responsible for creating everything from the table to the data that goes inside the table so this SQLite open helper has methods on create that gets called when the database is first created and an on upgrade that gets triggered when you perform some changes to the structure of your table like maybe adding some columns or altering the database tables in some way. And what you have is your implementation of this class SQLite Open Helper, which is in other words some class that extends the SQLite Open Helper and provides the implementation details for these two methods. Now when someone does call the method get writable database on your implementation, what you're gonna return is an SQLite database object. Now this is the complex stuff so far. This SQLite database object is the one that you're gonna be using inside your app to perform operations like insert, update, delete and query. This is the two level database design as far as simple database is concerned. Now let's talk about the three level. Things are very very same over here except for a few changes. Just again the SQLite open helper, again the on create, on upgrade, again you will create a class that extends the SQLite open helper. Again, someone is going to call get writable database on an object of your class. And this is going to give an SQLite database object. So far, things were just like what we discussed in the two level design. But here things get different. Use the SQLite database object inside a class which is a database adapter. Now if you guys have been seeing my list view videos and other videos you know very well an adapter is someone who's responsible for managing data. So this adapter is going to have certain methods like insert, update, delete and query. But this is not your app. Your app is someone else who's going to use this adapter where in response to certain UI changes 
it's gonna call insert caller update caller delete caller and query caller so what are these four callers like for example you may have a text field or edit text in your app where someone enters something and that is gonna trigger the insert caller over here and this is gonna put the data using the insert method of the adapter and the insert method will tell whether the data was inserted successfully or not by returning something back and this is how the other methods are also going to work every time the caller calls something the method inside the adapter will tell whether that executed successfully or not and return some kind of result to the caller so this would be the three level design again don't worry if you guys are not clear with exactly what is happening we'll be talking about all these things in a lot more detail in the upcoming videos for now my idea was to just give you a high level perspective of what is exactly going to happen in the next 10 20 videos in this playlist so first let's talk about uh, raw sql queries now do not use raw sql queries now this is one of the major things that you guys forget and fail to understand if you guys are even from a jdbc background or something like that here let me show you a simple example what i have is some user agent some app or something is calling execute query and it says select star from my table what we have is this method execute query defined somewhere else that takes the string SQL and it directly tries to execute that by seeing DB dot raw query now we'll talk about what this DB means and what this raw query means so don't worry too much about it but there's a small problem with this now if the user agent changes the query something like this by seeing select star from my table delete star from my table now this is gonna totally execute because these are considered two separate valid SQLite statements in Android and that would completely screw up your app because delete star from my table is gonna remove everything from your app and this is why you do not execute raw queries on Android to avoid some kind of undesirable modification to your database and hence we'll be using standard methods like insert delete update and there's another one probably which I don't remember right now but these methods are gonna let you work with the database without putting raw queries inside in a form providing you some kind of protection against undesirable modifications now these methods belong to the class called SQLite database which I'll be talking about in my upcoming videos so hopefully you guys have got a high level overview of what is exactly gonna happen as far as databases are concerned and what kind of database levels you can design in your app in the upcoming videos we're gonna be drilling down SQLite in a lot more detail at, at least more detail than anything you ever saw on YouTube so in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.